just before on the skeleton and I'm drawing the eye placed in that orbital cavity. This part is the eyebrow and we're going to paint the eyebrow. Now women have a great advantage with this because they tweeze their eyebrows along their brow line so that they know how the area works better. Also, putting on makeup really helps. So I'm drawing or painting the eyebrow. Then I'm imagining the iris. We're doing brown eyes because I have brown eyes. We're just doing that very simply. And then we're going to paint the white of the sclera or the gray of the eye. Now within the iris there are a few things. We have a pupil that is right in the middle that expands and contracts according to the amount of light there is. So I'm just going to make this pupil very dark to begin with and then we'll get back to that in a minute. Right here you have the nasal planes that we talked about on the skeleton and they cast a shadow and I'm mixing some of my red umber, some of my alizarin, the colors we discussed, a little scarlet sienna and a little blue to gray it to make a shadow color in the inner crevice of the eye. That's basically where our shadow would be from the nasal bones. Then I'm drawing the lid over Here we have the lid, then we have the tear duct right here, and we're coming up here for the upper part of the lower lid, and this is the bag under the eye. And I'm going to continue lighting this and showing you how to expand upon it. So I'm going in and I'm darkening the eye eyebrow a little bit. Again, the light is coming from here, so there would be shadow. I'm using a little raw sienna again in my shadow. There would be a shadow here as well. Um, there might be a little shadow here and a little shadow here. And then we know that the lower lid here is going to be hit by the light. So I'm adding a little warm to that. And a little shadow underneath. Might have a little darkness for the bag of the eye over here. Then the sclera, this eyeball is round, so I'm going to put this in shadow so that it goes back. The iris has a dark rim around it, and then the more colorful part is between that dark rim and the pupil. Getting that nice, beautiful warmth of the brown eye and you can see that this is a roundness here and then I just want to take a minute to explain the lid to you. The lid is double width. The eyelashes are coming out alternating so that makes this very wide. And dark. 
and this lid being so thick casts a shadow on this part of the eye and also on the sclera. So we have a little more shadow here and we have a little more shadow here. And you can start to see that eye going into the head. I'm going to reiterate that pupil again. Now there's a very special quality that the eye has uh, due to the cornea that makes it transparent. So that light actually passes through the eye. I'm putting a little warm in the tear duct. I'm going to get that shadow side of the eye a little darker. Okay, now as we imagine that light passing through here, I'm going to put a highlight in. And if you get that too large, you just creep up on it with other colors. Now, that highlight passes through the domed cornea and makes that side more translucent. So that the color, most of the color in the iris is right there and you can start to see that coming a little alive and glistening. Now to get back to this white of the eye you can have the white a little whiter, you can add a little red to it, a little yellow to it, Going to add a little light here because it's round and it's, you want that feeling of going around. Again, you have that dark lower, lower part of the upper lid. And here we have shadow on the upper lid. I'm just going to give it a little more yellow and warmth. Then I'm going to paint a half tone. Just like we did on the egg, we're looking at this half tone. And this half tone tells us that it's round. And then the light. And you can start to see how that eye comes from the cavity. Here we have half tone and then we'll move into the light a little more. Every shadow has a half tone and then a light because I want an opportunity to soften edges. I'm going to use that half tone and push my brush from the light to the dark to soften that edge. I'm going to sculpt her eyebrow a little bit. And I also want to get a feeling of air in that eyebrow, so I'm putting a little flesh in there. I'm getting a little reflected light in here, and it gets a little warm too to go with the eye. We're going to try a little bit of lashes under the eye. That was a little too much, her mascara ran. And then I'm just painting yeah. under the eye, which tends to be a little cooler. And 
and very simply applying shadow, half tone, and light, we have an eye. I'm going to demonstrate the nose now, and I want you to remember that the light is coming from here. When you think of the nose, I want you to think of four planes. This is the bridge, the side plane, another side plane. This would be the bag of the eye. And then this part would be where the nostrils are. Here you have the wings of the nose. So when you conceive of the nose uh, like this, it's very helpful. This is the septum. So we go from the septum to the nostrils. And now we have a, a nose. I'm going to light it the same way. So we're going to get shadow on this plane of the nose. And I'm just going to very simply find a decent flush tone, put the whole shadow in. I'm not differentiating right now between cast shadow, reflected light, and average shadow. I'm just getting the shape of the shadow on that nose. The nostrils can be the cast shadow because they're dark in there and they're not receiving any light. So you paint the nostrils as the cast shadow. So we have this whole shadow and your cast shadow. We have no reflected light yet. I'm just going to broaden this a little bit. There might be some cast shadow right here on the other side of the owl or the wing of the nose. And then sometimes you'll see a shadow coming down from here onto the lip. But I'm not going to paint that because I want you to be able to see everything pretty clearly. I'm carrying the shadow over this nose or over this nostril and around here. And I'm just reiterating the nostrils. Okay, we have the shadow. Now we're going for the half tone. And this is a good place to illustrate the softness and hardness of the half tone. Every shadow has a half tone. And I'm just putting it on right next to it. I want my value to be a good jump. Might go a little bit lighter. So each part of the shadow gets a half tone. And when I get to here, the rounder part of the nose is going to be softened. And this is going to be a little harder because it's bone. I'm going to go back and just firm up that shadow a little bit. This is the average shadow. And maybe we'll make a little roundness here for the nose. And you can be skinned to see the nose coming. Now we're going to put in the reflected light, which is going to be darker than the half tone. And usually, because the nose sticks out, there's a little reflected light in the septum area. And then right above the nostrils, And again, I'm just going to reiterate that shadow so you can see it clearly. Okay, so we have shadow, half tone, cast shadow, and we're going to put in the light and the highlight so that we get a nose.
So I'm mixing up a good batch of regular old light with yellow ochre, maybe a little scarlet sienna, and maybe a little cadmium red. And I'm just pushing it in there. I'm going to cool it down with a little blue. Now this is the bridge and this is the side plane. I'm doing them the same color and the same value to start with just so you see how we can create that nose. And this is like a big band-aid coming around here. Next we're going to put in a highlight so that we can differentiate the planes again. And we're going to put in a highlight here and here. And you can start to see the nose coming. Now, on this side, we're going to get that side a little darker and a little cooler so that it goes back a little more. I've just added a little blue and a little burnt umber. And you can see how that starts to go back. We're going to bring the wings of the nose out a little bit here. It's going to get a little lighter here. And we can add a little bit of darker light on this side. I just hit it a little bit. and I'm going to lighten my highlight. The highlight isn't the same lightness all the way around. Usually the highest part of that highlight is going to be right there at the tip to bring that out because that's the furthest out and then maybe a little bit more light in here and then sometimes the nose has a little more red on it on the bold part, so we might just put a little more red color in here. And then I'm going to use my fan brush to not only hit the glare, get rid of the glare like we talked about, but to soften these edges. I'm going to start drawing in the lips and remember again the light is coming from here and they're wrapping around the head. Now there are a couple of things very important about the lips that make them much easier to paint. I'm doing this in black so you can see. If you consider this part here one segment. There's a little bow here that comes down over the lower lip and then you have these. This is another segment and this is another segment. So that you have one, two, three segments of the upper lip and two segments of the bottom lip. Usually in most situations the upper lip is in shadow and we're going to mix some alizarin some cobalt, some burnt sienna, a little cadmium red, and maybe some red umber in there to get a nice shadowy lip color. And that color seems a little too violet to me, so I'm going